You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. A day one of LSU football practice, fall camp in the books. Media got to watch about two hours worth. Uh, we were only allowed about 15 minutes worth of uh, uh, photo and video opportunities, but we're invited to say the rest of the practice uh, to watch. Uh, they started inside. We got to see about 30 minutes inside. Then they went outside, which was the bulk of the time that uh, we were out there. We did get to see a lot of uh, individual drills, basically position grouping drills. Uh, we got to watch a good bit of seven-on-seven seven outside and inside. We got to watch corners and wide receivers uh, go one-on-one. -on -one. It was a heck of a day for the wide receivers and a forgettable day for the defensive backs in the one-on-ones and in the seven-on-sevens. Um, usually the defense, as they say, is ahead of the offense, but the, today was a, a total 180, and it makes sense. Look at all of the offensive production that LSU returns. You know, every year ESPN does that uh, you know, college football returning production metric where they look at you know, how much of you, just your literal returning production on both sides of the ball and in those S&P Plus rankings, and LSU's in the top 10 in the country because they return a, the lion's share of their offense back with Jaden Daniels and uh, basically all of your top receivers except for Kayshawn Booty and Jure Jenkins, but all of your, I mean, you have eight running backs, six of, of whom were, uh, five of whom were contributors for you a year ago. The real challenge is defensively, you replace almost everyone. Um, Jaqueline Roy is gone. B.J. Ojolari is gone. Ali Gay is gone. Micah Baskerville is gone. Jark Bernard Converse, Makai Garner, Joe Fouché. I, you, you're losing basically all of your defensive production. So you would expect that at the start of this season, given how much LSU returns offensively, a fifth-year starter at quarterback, some really talented receivers, second year in this offense, and then all of the new guys defensively that the offense would be ahead, and boy, were they today. Um, here was Brian Kelly when he met with reporters after practice on uh, the first day of camp. You know, good work today. I thought, um, you know, the realistic expectation is that uh, there's a number of veterans back here that, um, you know, they're able to, you know, recognize and understand the way to prepare in, in relative terms, uh, practice, right? The way I wanted practice to go last year at this time, we were teaching them how to practice. So, you know, there should be that expectation that, you know, you come into practice one that guys know how to do the things that you expect to prepare the right way. And I think by and large that that happened today. And then there's some young guys that are trying to figure it out. I want to focus, if I could, on one position group on each side of the ball that starting this fall camp, I think we all looked at to say, okay, that's going to be a question. Um, on the offensive side, it's, it's at running back. Like We know Jaden Daniels is your starting quarterback. We know your starting offensive line. We saw it today, left to right. It was Will Campbell at left tackle, as we, we knew. Uh, Miles Frazier was at left guard. Charles Turner at center. Garrett Dellinger at right guard. And then um, you had uh, Emory Jones, of course, at right tackle. And wait, I'm just, let me check just to make sure I didn't flip the. Um, I'm sorry, forgive me. Garrett Dellinger was at left guard. Miles Frazier was at right right guard. I thought I flipped him, so I flipped the the, the guards. My apologies. So you know who, who your starting offensive linemen are going to be. Jaden Daniels is your quarterback. We know who your first three receivers are. It's Malik Neighbors. It's Brian Thomas. It's Kyron Lacy. We know Mason Taylor is your starting tight end. Like we know. The question is how the running back reps are going to be divvied up. And you know, whenever they were doing running back drills initially like we saw Josh Williams and Armani Goodwin go first and then it was Noah Kane and Trey Bradford uh, forgive me uh, Logan Diggs and Trey Bradford and then it was uh, Noah Kane and Trey Holly so my point is it was a little um, everybody had a turn when they went to seven on sevens uh, I'm sorry when they went to quarterback running back drills when they were working on, you know, out of the pistol and handoffs, Noah Kane took the first rep, which was interesting. And then Josh Williams took the second rep. And then it was Armani Goodwin and then Trey Bradford. So no Logan, uh, Logan Diggs went fifth. Then they went outside and they were doing seven on sevens. And Josh Williams was your first running back. It, it 
I guess my point is when you looked at the running backs, there wasn't a lot of rhyme or reason or set rotation. I, I really feel like they're figuring out how those reps are ultimately going to be divvied up. Brian Kelly talking about running back, though, today. Let's start. First of all, if we could start with uh, with John Emery. Play, uh, number 11, if could, John Emery was not there. Brian Kelly explained why. He had to finish up uh, an internship today. Uh, final. He's in great shape. Thanks for asking the question. He has done everything. He has uh, been fabulous to work with. Uh, we're proud of uh, his accomplishments, and he'll he'll be with us uh, tomorrow. But he had to get an internship finished up today, finish that paperwork, get that turned into the registrar's office. And instead of rushing out here, you know, with his shoes untied and kind of running on the field, we just said, take care of it. You've gone this far and worked this hard. Get that taken care of and, and uh and, and that's what he's doing today. So John Emery will be back out there tomorrow or on Friday. It was the first day of practice for Logan Diggs, uh, the Notre Dame transfer being out there. He's wearing number three. Here was Brian Kelly on his former Notre Dame uh, running back, now LSU running back Logan Diggs. He's a guy that I know very well, and I know what he's capable of. He's uh, he's very smooth. Uh, he's physical. Uh, he's got a great burst. And, and his ability to stay on the field on all three downs, he knows protections. He can catch the ball coming out of the backfield. So, you know, I know him really well. He looked good. The, the question with him was his health. You know, he had a hamstring that we had to work through most of the summer, which limited him, but he looked healthy. And that was really the biggest thing for me to see that he was healthy today. And um, he looked good. He felt good. And he just adds to the depth of that room, uh, which is going to be as complete and as deep as any running back room that I've ever coached. As complete or deep as the running back room that I've ever coached. And they have a, if you include the two freshmen and Trey Bradford coming back and John Emery, they've got eight running backs. And I'm telling you, there was no real set order or anything that was decipherable or discernible today. If I had to bet money today, first play of the season, who's in at running back, I'm betting Josh Williams. I couldn't tell you that he's going to take the most carries in the game against Florida State or be your leading rusher by the end of the season. So it it may be a week-to-week thing where they look at who has the hot hand. The, the best evidence I can give you is when you go back and you look at 2011. Go back and look at 2011 LSU and how they divvied up the, the carries and the production with um, with that team in 2011 where you had this this glut of talent at running back. And remember, you didn't even that was a year where you know you ended up not even having Jeremy Hill available for you. Uh, he was you know he he had had his off the field issue but should have been part of that team as well. So when you look at you know, Spencer Ware and Michael Ford and Terrence McGee and then Kenny Hilliard emerged late, and of course Jordan Jefferson was was your running back that year as well. It was you know, um, like here's the here's the rushing stats from that season. Uh, Spencer Ware had 177 attempts. Ford had 127. Blue had 78. Jordan Jefferson had 75. Kenny Hilliard had 62. Terrence McGee had 27. I mean, that's five running backs and your quarterback that played a key role. Like, I think the freshmen this year at LSU probably don't have a really impactful role. Um, so that's maybe where you can cut that line, and then which of the veterans might see their their limits, their reps limited. Is it Trey Bradford? Is it Armani Goodwin? You know, I think the the given that we know, you know, is Noah Kane is. I think Josh Williams is going to play a lot. John Emery's going to have his role for sure, and you didn't bring Logan Diggs in here to sit. So I think those three are a sure thing. As you can find, who else factors in offensively is going to be interesting. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.